if this plane that I've sketched here represents the column space of the transformation, which is the row space of A transpose, as I hope we understand. Now, it represents the column space. The column space might be any dimension. It's not necessarily a two-dimensional plane. It might even be one-dimensional. It might be 17-dimensional. It could be any dimension. But I'm going to represent it by a plane because we understand planes. And the null space could also be any dimensional, but since I've already uh, used a plane here, uh, I'm going to represent the null space by this line and indicate that the null space is orthogonal to the column space. So that if B is any vector that's not in the column space, and we've established that that's usually the case when we're doing a best fit uh, a regression analysis. Um, so if this is our vector B, the vector that we get from our data, the set of y values in the depth versus time model, we project B parallel to the null space until we hit the column space or the row space of A transpose. And the vector that we get there is the vector that we call B sub row, the projection of the B vector into the column space. So B row is the projection of the B vector into the column space. Or the projection into row of A transpose of B. And then again, the desired X is the X for which the transformation takes it to be row. Um, there's one other thing I should have said that I forgot to say, and I don't remember what it was, but let's think about it for a minute. Um, okay, well, I've forgotten it. Uh, maybe it'll come up, maybe it won't, but that's our picture. Now, there's another even simpler picture that we could draw. We represented the column space of our transformation by a plane when it could be, you know, any dimension, 48 dimensional. We represented our null space by a line, but the null space could be 30 dimensional or 100 dimensional. Um, so there's no reason except that it's maybe a little misleading that we couldn't represent our column space by a line and our null space of a transpose by another line orthogonal. And we just need to understand that this could be a three-dimensional space. It could be a 50-dimensional space. It's not going to actually be a line unless it's one-dimensional. But we're going to still use this to represent it. And we're going to use this line to represent n of a transpose and all space of the transpose matrix, whatever its dimension. Our B vector, as always, cannot be expected to be in our column space for reasons that we've mentioned a number of times and I'm not going to mention again. Our transformation can take a vector here and map it to any vector here. So our transformation can give us any of these 
a vector represented by any of these points. Okay, so for example, the vector represented by this point might be this. Vector represented by this point up here might be this. Vector represented by this point might be this. And this purple vector that I've drawn here for the B vector is just represented in this space by this point, but I'm still drawing the vector. And I just really screwed that up. So um, all these could be vectors in our space W. Any vector in our space V has to map onto the column space, doesn't it? So it doesn't map onto any of these vectors. These are just vectors in W. that are not in the column space, okay, these things that I've drawn in plot. Okay, what I want to draw is vectors that are in the column space because that's what we get from vectors x here and what we're trying to find is a vector x. So I could draw the points for those vectors like so. Well, how far is b from here? Well, it's going to be as far as the length of this vector. How far is it from here? Well, it's as far as the length of this vector. This looks like it may be a little further than this. And clearly over here, these vectors are even further. The vector that we're looking for is the one that's as close as possible to B. That's the values of A, B, and C that give us that bring us closest to the B vector, and it should be clear then that that's what we're going to get if we project the B vector parallel to the normal in order to get this vector here that we'll represent by this arrow. This projection line, and we could make this another vector if I had another color handy. Constitutes a vector, if you will, that's in the null space. Okay, This vector is parallel to the null space, so it's a member of the null space. And this vector is our B sub row. This vector is our B. And let's see. Uh, B sub row minus this vector equals B. So this vector as I've drawn it would be our minus B sub N. And you can visualize that in terms of what we've done over here. Specifically what we've got here. Okay, all this is just to reinforce the idea that what we're doing is we're projecting the B vector into the column space of a transformation defined by the matrix A. And that gives us the vector to which our best fit solution would be mapped. And the X vector that we get over here, which we get by this fairly simple process, uh, is constitutes uh, the values of A, B, and C to give us the best possible quadratic fit to our data.